Let us prove that ATM is undecidable. So first, you may be wondering, what is ATM? And we covered that in a previous lesson, but for the sake of completeness, let me explain what it is. So ATM is a, f a function that you would write. Okay, let me call that ATM. Let me write just some um, Python notation. Right, actually, let me... I'm going to write it here. I don't want to say that this is Python. Okay. So the idea is I would write a function that returns a Boolean, right? So it takes two parameters. First is a machine. The second one is an input. And now what my code has to do is return true if machine accepts input. Otherwise, if machine return true, else return. Right. So this is the code I want to write. I want to be able to return true whenever my machine accepts the input and return false whenever my machine rejects the input. The problem here is that I have to prove, right, because I need to show that it is decidable or not. So if this were a decidable implementation, then this code would never loop, right? But if you, if you recall, if I were just calling a function, calling a Turing machine, running a Turing machine, which I could do if you remember the universal Turing machine, um, the problem here is that if you, a Turing machine itself might loop, right? So you cannot just call a Turing machine uh, because imagine there is a loop, right? Imagine your input, your machine is just something, let's say the machine is something that just has a while through uh, skip, right? Which in Python is pass. Imagine your machine is just doing a loop, right? If I were to run that machine, then I pass it any input, it would loop on that input, and that would be problematic, right? So the code that I am implementing can do whatever you want. So I could look at how the source code is designed, uh, but now the question is, is it even possible to implement a function such as ATM, you know, that could inspect the code of the Turing machine and figure out whether or not that Turing machine will accept that input, right? The easiest way, the easiest way I, I could think of to implement this code is just to run it, right? You would take the machine, you would call it, pass it the input, and return whatever that machine returns, right? If the machine accepts, you return true. If the machine rejects, you return false. And here the problem that we've seen is that that implementation wouldn't work, is not decidable because the machine that you're calling may loop. And if it loops, then this loop, this, uh, sorry, condition would loop, right? So this is not a, a good implementation because this implementation is not decidable. So now the question is, is there even any possible um, implementation that is decidable. How do we know that? We need to prove. Um, this is a proof by contradiction because we want to prove that something is not something, right? It's not decidable. So we're going to assume that it is decidable and then we're going to show that there is a contradiction. So let's advance. So if you think of the, of ATM as like a, like a, functional description, you would return true exactly what I wrote here, right? So it's it's this kind of code. You return whether or not M accepts the input W. So this is just a high level description. It's not actually code. It's just so you have a, a, an intuition of what ATM represents. It takes two parameters, it takes a machine and the input. But as we've learned um, in, um, 
Turing machines, we you only have a tape, right? Uh, but you can encode, as we've learned, you can encode multiple easily pairs of things. Uh, for that, we have this notion of a decoder and encoder of inputs, and we'll see that when I show you the examples, and that's what you'll see in the book. Um, the proof that I'm going to show you is the proof that is in the book, with more detail, though, because the book kind of is more interested in giving you an intuition rather than actually showing you a very formal proof. So, um, how do we prove that ATM is undecidable? We're going to prove that it is not possible to do that. It's not possible to give a decidable algorithm. And be the way you can think of this, if it's undecidable, it means that it's not decidable. So we're going to assume that ATM is decidable, and we're going to show that if it is decide, if ATM were decidable, then I can reach a contradiction. So how do we prove that? Well, the proof is quite uh, interesting, and it's it's a bit of a mind bender. The idea is I'm going to write this Turing machine. I'm going to write some code that does the following. So W is going to be a machine. W is going to be the description of a machine. So let's say that the input is going to be the source code of a Turing machine. And we have a function that, um, you know, parses that input and converts that into a real machine, right? So that, that would be something like uh, parse the machine or something. So you get that M, which is the machine you just decoded from the input. This is a function that is bundled and in the in our uh, theory of proving results about uh, about Turing machines. So let's say we have this function that is able to, given some input, it is able to parse that input and parse the Turing machine out of it. So it could be any kind of encoding. You could have like a Turing machine encoded in JSON or whatever, and this would uh, parse that representation, textual representation, and create an object that represents a Turing machine a logical object that represents a Turing machine. So the idea is, what what does the negator do? Okay, so first I was just explaining what decode ATM is. Now let me just explain what ATM is. So ATM is just the, um, the decider of ATM. As you recall, the decider is just the algorithm that decides. So we're going to assume, again, we are trying to assume, prove that ATM is undecidable. So we're going to assume that it is decidable. Right? So if it is decidable, there is some decider. That means there is some code that implements and always returns either true or false given whatever machine I gave it and whatever input I give it. Right? So we're going to call that ATM. So this ATM is, is just this decider that implements um, the decider of, of ATM, the language. Right. So what does the negator do? The negator does something very easy. It takes a machine as input, right? And then what it does is it calls that input and it sends as input a string which is itself, right? So what the negator will do is, if I were to write this in some kind of pseudocode, Python, I do negator. What the negator takes is a machine. What the negator does is, um, returns return not ATM machine and then machine. Okay, so here we're kind of machine parse. Okay. So this is not actually the machine, this is the code. And here what I'm passing is um, the code. And when I parse, I get the machine. And then here what I pass is the code of the machine, right? Code of machine. Of machine. As we see here, ATM takes a, a machine and some input. The input could be the code of a machine. So the only thing I'm doing is I'm calling ATM and I'm passing, I'm checking, is the code of the machine, uh, does that accept this input, right? Is this machine, does this machine, will this machine accept this input? So another way of writing this is, 
return not uh, parse code of machine accepts accept code of machine right so if I parse that machine right because ATM is what is highlighted here so what ADM is going to do is is it's going to return whether the machine on the left hand side accepts the input that is given the input is code of machine the machine is parse code of machine so what we're returning is we're returning the negation of that so we're returning whether so that's the same as this returning whether the parsed machine does not accept right so actually let me kind of rephrase this right so the negator what it does is it parses the code of a machine and it returns whether the parsed machine does not accept the code of that machine right so that's basically what it's doing right same as So you give it the source, so the negator, given some code of a machine, it will parse that code and will return whether that machine does not accept its own source code, right? So, which is same as machine does not accept its code. Let me just rewrite to reject. Okay. So what the negator does is, given a machine and the code of that machine, does the machine reject its own source code? It's code as input. All right. So you return true if the machine rejects its code as input, and we return false if the machine accepts the code as input. So now we can summarize it. Source code reject its code if you give it as input. Okay. All right. So you can think of it as f, and you give f dot code equals false right so if you run that machine with its code will it reject or loop that's what we're asking that's what the negator is doing oops ignore that um okay so that's what the negator is uh, next, I'm going to explain, in the next video, I'm going to explain how do you do the actual proof.